13. Lucky number 13. All right, this is Real Singers on Singing. Lucky number 13. I hope the audio is good. And I am with Dino. Dino, and how do you pronounce your last name? Well, um, it's it's pronounced differently in my country, but let's go with Jalusic. That's Jalusic. How, That's how, how it's spelled, right? Pronounce yeah. Jalusic. Yeah. How do you pronounce yeah, it? Yeah, how do you exactly. pronounce it in Croatian? We would say Jelusic because we have I and C. Uh, it, it, it's it's very common in our, in our surnames. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Like that. So um, yeah. So I so we were just talking about. We just started talking, and you were saying. Uh, how did you meet Jeff? Was it from Trans Siberian, or did you know him before that? Well, you know, I was I was a fan of Jeff for years, which you know I'm probably not the only one because right. we have we had we had Caleb Johnson from American Idol coming in this coming in uh, this year in TSO, and he said the same. But I I met him. Uh, I came for rehearsals, and he came a few days later. It was my first year with TSO, and you know we met, we started hanging out, and you know it's been three years since then. Nice. Did you ever yeah. uh, did you ever get to meet another friend of mine from that I like I know Jeff from I actually have known Jeff since I was like twenty. We've known each other for, for many years. Wow. But um and I'm old, I'm fifty, yeah. so I'm an old man. But uh I've known Jeff since we were young, but I uh through the boogie nights later on, which we both sang for Perfect World Entertainment, um I also ended oh. up meeting another great singer that sang for Trans Siberian was Joe Retta, who's a really good friend of mine. Did you ever get to Joe meet Joe Retta? I actually replaced Joe Reda right. in, in, in TSO. Yeah. Right, right, right. So if you you've got to yeah. heard him sing as well. He's a great. He's another great singer. Like just, he's a great singer. Yeah, phenomenal. He's ridiculous. Yeah. It's funny that you being how old are you? Twenty six, twenty seven. I'm twenty six. Yeah. Now, it's funny because when I so um, shout out to Matt Corey. He was the one that uh, sent uh, your video over to me when you were singing Badlands because we grew up um, listening to Badlands. And, uh, yeah, me too. It, we were like, you know, I was living in LA in like 89 when, you know, Ray was still around and the, you could, I got to go see him at, um, at the Hollywood Palladium. I got to go see him, um, Badlands do their thing or no, was it Palladium? I forget the name of the place anyway, but I actually got to see him and, uh, yeah, he was just amazing. But I, like being that I'm 50 and that's kind of my era growing up, how did you get turned on to this being that you were very young, like to hear of like Motley Crue, I'd understand, or some metal band like that because they were so popular. But a band like Badlands, nobody really knew who Badlands was. There wasn't a lot of fans back then, per se. Yeah. How did yeah. you How did you yeah. get turned on to him? I saw that you said Paul from Trans Siberian found him. Is, is yeah, it? yeah. I mean, um, I grew up listening to '80s and '70s music mostly. You know, even if it's pop. Even if it's rock, even if it's metal, and my dad kind of, when I was a kid, you know, he used to play me Kingdom Come, Van Halen, White oh, Snake, wow. Winger, you know, along with ACDC, Led Zeppelin, and then he used to play me, you know, Elton John, Billy Joel, Toto, Chicago. So I had, I had yeah. everything covered. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it was the heavier metal that I discovered myself, like Pantera and Lamb of God and stuff like that. But. Um, once I really got into that LA scene, I started discovering bands, and Badlands was one of the bands that I used to listen to a lot. Wow! And uh, you know, and uh, I knew this year was like 25 years since Ray died, and I was a diehard Ray fan. And we were both discovered by the same guy, Paul O'Neill from from TSO. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, I, I got to do this. And one day before my tour, I did I did that cover. I I put a camera. I did a video. And uh, I almost forgot to put it on YouTube, so thank God I did. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, once it came out, I the next day I woke up. There, there were so many messages, emails, friend requests, comments. It wow. was crazy. Like, you know, from my, from Mike Portnoy to Tim Ripper Owens, and you know, guys yeah. like that. So yeah. you know, I, I mean, I knew I I thought that you know it might happen because Ray is such a underrated singer but people who know how good he is you oh, know yeah. might appreciate that yeah yo oh, absolutely so so to, to your roots then your dad so your dad was a musician then yeah he was a guitar player in one of the most famous croatian rock bands so yeah okay yeah. and uh yeah. and i think i read somewhere your mother was a musician too correct well yeah i mean she played flute when she was a kid but i i've 
I'm not sure if I would count that, okay. honestly. <laughs> but yeah, she 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 can sing, so okay. I mean, yeah, yeah. And your dad, and um, so your dad probably only probably my age, and and maybe only a few years older. And uh, so he was the one that turned you on to all this rock, and and uh, that got you into those type of singers. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I remember uh, a cassette when I was a kid when we were you know, going on long trips, I can literally tell you the set list that we were listening to every day. It always started with two minutes to midnight by Iron Maiden. Amazing. Then some, some very unfamous, unpopular songs from, from bands. Like, uh, he used to play the song from Van Halen. Uh, what's the name of the album? I think it's, Oh, you wanted to, Oh, you it's wanted the, to. Yeah, yeah. It's the second album with Sammy uh -huh. song. Number two, it's called the naturally wired. Uh, it's a uh, it's a very it's a crazy song. My mom hated it because she loved the the ballads. Yeah. And you know there was Winger, Can't Get Enough, and uh, and White Snake, and uh, In and Out of Love by Bon Jovi, and Get It Hot by AC/DC, and uh, you know a, a lot of stuff, a lot of different stuff. So I kind of I kind of hated modern music, and and then I grew up, you know, and then I started listening to everything that's that's good. Yeah, I mean that's really cool, and because I saw, you know, I, when I when my buddy uh, sent me uh, your video, and then I said, oh, I, I got, I'm gonna get this kid on, and then I went and looked, you know, I went on YouTube and looked through all your videos, and like things popped up from when like you were very little, you were like on TV at a very young age singing. Yeah, yeah. You were playing piano. I forget the name of the song, but yeah. you were playing piano and singing, and like you just have it. Like you, you've got that 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 quality that everybody works to get but you already had it back then like you're, you're not even working you're having it's just you having I, I, fun i mean i was it's it's when, when i was a kid i was really famous in my country because i won like the junior eurovision thing the yeah. first one that was ever there and i played actually piano in studio for for my track i was 10 years old but then you know the voice the voice changes and stuff like I kind of lost the range I was I was I was a little bit depressed I thought I, I I would never be able to hit any of the high notes you know no rasp everything sounds very like like a very bad opera singer you know like you know it's it's um uh, it's hard to explain like my brother is going through it now he 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 his voice changed a few months ago and he can't sing anything and he's like you know, how can you do this? And I can't reach those notes. I'm like, you know, there's a certain phase you need to go through that I went through. But yeah, it's, I mean, technique is very important too. Did so. you, did you study technique when you, when you were a kid or when you came out of puberty, did you study or is it, did you just keep singing along to your favorite records and just instinctively got the sounds? Um, I would go with the, with the, with the second one with, with the, you know, with singing, but as I was going through it, I went to see my 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 vocal teacher, mm -hmm. who used to teach me when I was young, and but he always wanted to keep me, you know, in the middle range. You know, every time I would go higher, he's like, "Nah, you know, you better hear your voice. You got to do this. You got." But he was he was like a, like an opera teacher, so mm -hmm. you know, he always at one point he said, "Look, you know, we got to decide. You you will either go and study as an opera singer, or you." Or, or, you, or you go your own way and I'll just check you out every every now and then. And, uh, you know, and I just I just had so many gigs, so many acoustic gigs that I I got to know my voice better. And then I learned head voice and then I learned how to get from full voice to head voice and how to get, you know, how to resonate more, how to use rest properly and uh, and, you know, and control, which is, you know, the most important thing of all. Yeah, I mean that's definitely something that you have. I mean, to to, to be able to go sing in the, the you know uh, you know um, which, what what was the Badlands? It was the second album, Voodoo Child. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's uh, the last time. Last yeah, time. The last time. To go from singing a song like that, and then all the other songs you do, like uh, going through your you know your repertoire, a lot of like your original band, which you know we're gonna get to. I'm gonna get to as well, and yeah. um, you know singing very raspy, but then you immediately you can just clean it up. You know, you don't have an issue with cleaning it up at all. Yeah, that's a that, that, that that's a little Russell Allen influence I've I've had. Yeah, uh, he's also he's also my buddy from TSO, and uh, you know I I I really love to sing clean, and because I used to be in a band, you know, singing Pantera and growling, and it, it it's all good. But I was always looking for something, you know, if, if we can get if if you can achieve that, uh, you know, 
to be so badass, but just by singing, you know, and then I've heard Russell sing in Adrenaline Mob and I was like, damn, you know, th this is what, this is what I was looking for. And there was another guy, you probably heard of him called Jorn Lande. Yeah. yeah. You know, you know, and, and I, you know, you can hear my David Coverdale influence and Jorn is pretty much, you know, Coverdale with more rasp, with more, you know, shouting mm -hmm. and a little bit deal in uh -huh. it. So, yeah. I mean, I there's a completely different side of me that I haven't shown yet, and that's R and B because R and B was the first thing I, I you know, that, that's the first genre I learned to sing, and 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 that's that's where Jeff and I are really, you know, Jeff is really R and B and funk. Right. Well, so I'm gonna, I, that's funny because I'm going to tell you, that, and I don't mean to interrupt you, but I want to get it before I forget. The most, the thing on your YouTube page that got me as like a singer. You know, I'm a, I'm a singer first, and then I'm a vocal coach on the side. The thing that got me the most, and I was like, I, I have no idea. This is the one thing. And I'm going to turn you on to a singer. Write his name down. His name is Russell White. Okay. I want you to write his name down. I want you to YouTube him. He's a gospel singer. And I want you to go through and listen to him because you'll be able to do what he does. You'll just pick up his thing. Because when you did the bang, bang, the Jesse J thing, <laughs> that was the craziest thing I saw on your on your YouTube. At that point, I shut it off. I said, I don't want to sing anymore. That <laughs> <laughs> because and, and, being able to go, like I could sing high, and and and, and you know, I'll, I'll talk about myself a little bit. Not really, but a second. Like I could sing high, and I could sing all the rock, and I sing in metal shops, and I do all these type of things. But when it comes to, I'm a real like soul R&B lover. Like soul music is my favorite music. That's that's it. Yeah. Hands yeah. down, Sam Cooke's my favorite singer. Terrence Trent Darby's my second favorite singer. Oh my God! Yeah, uh, yeah I, I I owe uh, <laughs> Terrence cover to Jeff. Uh, I'm gonna tell you the song. I wrote it down because he he used to play me. He's like, you gotta cover this. Oh yeah. Because I I used to. Uh, I think it's if you come before me. That's oh, the song. Was if you go yeah. before me. Yeah, that, that's the one. There's like a riff. Yep. There's, there's like a riff by the end of the song. That he yep. thinks that it's you know that, that's impossible. I, I gotta listen to it, you know. Can you? Yeah, I know the I know this, I know the song oh too well. Like, yeah, I, dude, I know that yeah. stuff. But when you did that run, being able to do that a full in in a full voice, okay, and maybe you could. So I'm gonna get back to your opera roots. Is the technique you were learning from opera so much different from the way that you're singing your rock and your pop? Oh, completely. Um, Interesting. Okay, so um, honestly, uh, the uh, the only place where I still use that kind of kind of I don't know if I don't know the word. Is it impostation? Is that the word? Like 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 um, uh, the 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 shape of my vocal cords uh -huh. the, that I use right that I used to use when I was a kid. I still only use it in TSO because they 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 always want everything to be uh, very wide and very uh, open, you know, open. And so, so I sometimes really sing like like my my teacher used to sh used to show me. But when I sing, and you know, even when I sing Dio, I kind of use it. But once I go really high, you know, I have my own way. I have my own ways how I do it. Yeah, because like on that 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 tune, and you the run that comes down. Yeah. How, how are you able to move so quickly? If you're in what I believe, what you're saying, what you're trying to say, the difference between the the opera and the, what you were doing now, or your way of doing it, would you say yeah. it's from like more of a closed position, but you lean into that closed position? Um. Instead uh, of an open particular. position, leaning into that closed space. Yeah, it's uh. Let, let, let me think. So. Yeah, it's. Uh, I do it mostly with my clean voice. It, it's kind of. It's it's a lot easier than to do it raspy. Right. You know. You know to get the to get the Craig David kind of you know yep. thing. You know. I don't want to live my life. That kind of stuff that he does, it's, uh -huh. it has to be very thro like throaty, right? You know, n not not from chest and not from diaphragm. It has to be very it ha like the throat moves the most. Um, the throat moves. Yeah, moves it's hard to explain. Yeah. 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 
Because when you go higher and you're dealing with all that pressure, you know, we, know, we deal with pressure as we're singing, like you're yeah. singing like a high C sharp on that, that riff. It's like to deal with that pressure and still move as quickly as you do. That's what's a trip to me. Like that's been my like Achilles heel. Like I'm always trying to get the, the R&B runs better, but I'm always like, I'm, I've got, I'm, it was almost like I build up too much pressure and I can't do the run. I can just hit the notes fine and hit vibrato on it and it's fine. But to come down quickly, you know what I mean? Is is a trip yeah. because in falsetto the throat's like loose, oh, and you can move just like yeah, you yeah, yeah. in a lower chest. Yo, yo, mine. You can move a little bit quicker in yeah. your in a lower, uh, you know, singing obviously lower. How do you do that when you're leaning in like that? That's what's yeah. a trip. It's a little trick that yeah. you're doing. Yeah. I would actually love to try it now, but I, I was recording songs for uh, for a George Lynch record the whole day. So, nice. uh, so Good for you. yeah, um, yeah, it's gonna come out in November. It's it's a very very. The, um, I was actually recording an R and B song. That was the last song I did today because George, when he sent me the song, uh -huh. I was like, this is this is. It's gonna be very Badlands kind of kind of album, right. very rock and roll. You know, and the jam kind of thing, bluesy, blah blah blah. Yep. But I've heard a song, and I was like, I have this beautiful pop R and B melody. But you know, George is a rock metal guy, and then he sent me an email. He said, "Can you go more like poppy and R and B on this tune?" And I was like, "That's exactly what I wanted to do." So I was, I was riffing. You know, I mean, I don't use riffs that much because you know it might ruin the vibe. You know whatsoever but it, you know Tasteful. when it's time to show i mean it's cool to use it sometimes you know when show when you want to show people but i i don't use it that much it's when it when i sing funk or soul that i use it then but you know right. in rock and metal it's it's i don't know i sometimes it's it's not a place for it uh, no i i understand did you now learning the riffs those type of blues riffs like the one for the bang bang and those when you were young you were probably obviously listening to a lot of soul and R&B then, right? So it's kind of in your blood. It's in your makeup. Or, would, well, um, or did you yeah. sit there and go, Ma! you know, and sit there and work? No, everything. no, never, never, yeah. never. Now, it, uh, yeah, it, th th that's why it's hard to explain when people ask me, how do I riff? Right. It's, I don't know. Uh, I'm looking at my, uh, at my CD shelf to see, like, who, who are the, yeah, have you heard of Anastasia? Anastasia? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, she was one of my my favorite. She's still my favorite female singer, along with Janice and uh, and I love Sass Jordan. Uh, oh, you Seth know, Jordan. Seth, yeah, yeah. Sass, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but Anastasia was like a she was heavy, but she was bluesy, but she was so R and B, and I just loved everything she did. So I was kind of listening to her a lot, and I was listening to Toto a lot and Mother's Finest. Mother's Finest, one of my favorites, dude. That's one of my, Ma Joyce is one of my favorite singers. Mother's so Finest So unknown. Is, <laughs> Mother's Finest album from 1991, uh, it's called Black Radio Won't Play This Record, is in yeah. my top five yeah. records. It's, and uh, I, I used to listen to a lot of, yeah, a lot of Cool in the Gang and uh, Earth, Wind and Fire and James Brown and Prince. Right. Prince is probably my yeah, but never, and but never sat there to work out a riff. You just kind of listened, and then when you went to do the riff, you just go do the riff. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. I mean, that's another reason I just want to hang up the phone right now and just go to sleep. That's, <laughs> that's, I mean, that's fantastic, man. It's it's really, you, you know, getting back to your technique. You said uh, you learned how to connect your 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 C four to your chest voice, your chest voice to your head voice. Um, but yeah, but those, uh, I think it was a D on that Jesse J video, Jesse the quality J. of the, yeah, the, the, the quality of the video is, is so low, oh, but right. I, I knew I had to put it on YouTube because I had, I had no R and B videos. I was like, I want people to see five seconds of me riffing. Yeah, so that's great. Do you, um, did you, was it a trick that you learned to connect your head? Like when you said to me, I learned how to, I, you know, I went through my puberty stage and I was having a rough time and. And then I learned how to connect my chest voice to my head voice. Yeah. Was it like a yeah. trick that you did in your throat? Like it was a trick. It was like a trick. Here. I always hear that. Someone goes, ah, it's like a little trick I do. And then I just learned to use that trick more and more and more. No, no. Uh, I meant you, I, I, I thought you said a trick because it was a long oh, way okay. no, I meant a trick. I'm for sorry. me to get it. And I, I literally 
I was I I, I saw um, Adam Lambert. He was he was on American Idol. It was two thousand and nine, mm -hmm. and you know I was able to scream all, everything he would do, but I would scream everything from throat. There was there would be no resonance, no diaphragm, and I was like, why does he sound? Why does you know he screams sound so so much more powerful? And I kept singing and singing at the bars, and one day I just shouted and I said, let, let me try something. And I realized that there was something I, you know, inside me that I had no, I, no idea what was that. And I started using that more and more and it kind of became more natural. But, you know, um, as far as the break, I'm a baritone tenor. I can actually sing really low and it's also only technique. So, um, but like C4 and C sharp are still full voice. I can, when I'm really well rested, I can hit, I can eat D's and E's, but when it's when it's you know three hour gig, I I sing C sharp also in in, in a mix, and um, yeah, it's um. What is the mix when you say the mix? I, I, this is what I mean. Like a guy like you, that's very, you know, I'm not going to say natural because I don't believe anybody's natural. I believe that you worked hard. I've seen videos of you when you were just practicing your low range. You're like, I got to practice my low range, like. You obviously yes. you have a passion for this. I mean, obviously you've been doing it so many years. But besides being a child, kid coming up and saying, you actually get in your room and you practice. You actually work things out. And, mm. and, oh, no, don't say yeah. no. <laughs> don't say no, I don't. <laughs> um, well, uh, I mean, um, I, 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 I perform so much. I mean, TSO has 50, 50 uh, right. concerts in two months. So... You know, um, it's like through my performances, I, I kind of get things. It's not that I go to my room and, and, and just stare and, and, and sing. Okay. But as far as low register, I, yeah, that's, that's. So, so you wouldn't I, say you practiced when you were learning to get through, when you were coming out of puberty and trying to get your, you know, connect your voice or whatever. Um, you were just singing acoustic gigs and it just kind of, like you said, it kind of came to you one night what would you say the mix that you said you said you know I, I sing up to a mix up here what does that feel like to you because this is a thing that a lot of people like don't get I, I you know for me when i sing in a quote quote mix and i'm singing up really high it's almost like a character voice it's not my speaking voice it's a totally different feeling in my throat kind of like falsetto feels different than chest voice mix voice yeah. feels different than chest voice do you feel something different going on for you um, yeah, um, yeah, as far as mix of oh, like a switch that kicks in at some point. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it, it's more, um, especially when it's live and when I'm tired, it, I mean, it's crazy. Uh, when I was younger and when my technique wasn't, wasn't as good as now, mm -hmm. I would, I would put all the difficult songs in the beginning of the set so I can show what I can do. And then I was just, I would just go down. And now it's different. Now I take first few songs to warm up and I put everything, everything that's really high, I put by, by the end because that's when I'm, you know, the, the strongest. Uh -huh. um, but, you know, at the gigs, I, first I lay, I, I lay on, on, a, on a certain note. And then w w when I got it, I start resonating more. It, it, it's like, a full, you know, you come in in, in falsetto mm -hmm. almost. And then you, you you just start opening more, and you give more you know power from 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 the throat and from your uh, diaphragm, and then at, at a certain point you can't really tell you, you can't really um, tell the difference between that and a full voice, you know, because the, the 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 power you give from diaphragm and the th throat is used as a like a resonant box at that point. So so it's like a connection. Um, it's like you're getting you're feeling a connection. It from your from the air from your diaphragm, from this pressure underneath your larynx, and you feel that little oh yeah cord. You feel this pressure, not like some people try to find it from falsetto. Ah! It's never going to connect, like because yeah, there's, yeah. There's, there's no connection from the diaphragm from the body to the throat. So you're feeling yeah, more a, that ah! where you're connected in your throat. Damn. Yeah, it's uh yeah. Um, is that what you say it is? Like you feel that pressure. You feel a pressure built up. Definitely. I mean, uh, um, you know, it's sometimes it's, 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 it's not, you know, it's not that easy. It's, it's, it's something that's very exhausting. And, uh, right. cause, uh, 
I use my whole body to to produce certain notes, and uh, you know, technically, you can you can do something more, um, you know, like technically, uh, I, I can sing some stuff perfectly, but if the emotion or the the, the color I want to get is not there, I'm just gonna push more and more until I get it. Especially in the studio live, I'm a completely different person live than in studio. In studio, I put a lot more live. Everything comes, everything is a lot more easier. I actually I feel a lot more uh, comfortable singing live than in the studio. I, I I agree. I think that's that's I've always I I I am not one to like the studio at all. I can't stand it. I I don't like it at all. I love. I mean, live. yeah. Yeah, but the, the thing is, um, when I sing when I sing live, I I always listen to the hall or or the venue where we play, and I I, I hear myself through the, that hall, and I kind of adjust my singing when when I hear how I resonate. I know the way that I should sing, and, and as far as studio, if I if I have a, an engineer that doesn't know me, he's gonna cut you know some of the frequencies I don't want him to cut, right? And I'm gonna be pissed, and and that's the reason why I I produce my my own you know nice. my own vocals for, for 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 every album I do, and oh good, I actually told yeah I actually told Jeff, I think he bought the same microphone that I have, you know, and he when we did the Animal Drive record, he said like your vocals sound so powerful. And I said, yeah, well, I was the one mixing vocals. So, you know, I knew what I wanted to get from the vocals. And he right. said, you know, so, yeah. Do you, when, I mean, what, do you warm up yeah. before your gigs? When you go to gigs, do you, do you have a warm up that you do? Or do you, uh, do you warm up at home? Do you ever do scales, anything like that? They were, you were taught uh, or do you just, you just go? Actually a uh, funny thing. I wake up in the morning yeah. and I just, and, and I just, that moment when I wake up, I know exactly how I'm gonna sound <laughs> in the evening. I, I literally know. I'm like uh, the video you saw from the, the Jesse J video. Yeah, I had like a singing clinic in um, in Croatia. They 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 called me to to show different techniques and blah. And I woke up that morning and I was like, oh, I have to sing, you know, high low. I have to show, you know, Paul Rogers and Freddie Mercury and Ronnie James Dio, and my voice is not there. And I was just being quiet, and I came there, and it was there. So, so now I, 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 I just know that it, you know, for the first three hours when I wake up, I shouldn't think about it at all, because you know it takes like three, four hours for you. You know, you have to eat, you have to be well rested, blah blah blah. But you know, I, I don't judge myself anymore when I wake up. But I know, you know, I know. I know how it might sound in the, in the evening, but I, on this tour, I started warming up more because oh, okay. I had to do, yeah, I, I had to, I had to replace a female singer on, on one gig. So, so I was like, ah, oh. and it, everything was in her key. Mm -hmm. I had to do it with Jeff, with Jeff, um, on one song for this year in TSO. We sang a song together because oh, cool. he was supposed to do it with a Canadian singer and she was sick. So they said, well, you know, Dino, you're, you're on. And yeah, I actually really warmed up for that. What, but it's, 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 yeah. you know, it's like, uh, oh, is it a straw? I don't know the, 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 uh, American word for it. Yeah. Straw. Like but, a... Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, and, you know, blowing bubbles and singing into a, a bottle of water. Okay. So, yeah. That's, yeah, that's. So you'll do stuff, you'll do stuff like that. You'll warm up with, with, yeah, with that, but, yeah. But but not very often. It's it's yeah sometimes, and I do like a that kind of stuff. Right. But um, that's it. You don't that that's your set. That's your things. Like a little little lip bubble, a little straw in the water. If you got time to do it, otherwise you're like, ah, oh, I got this. You just go up and you sing. Nah, I, I I just love being quiet before the gig just to save everything I have, and you know. Uh, you know, playing uh, small venues and bars and, you know, when it's crowded and people want to talk, I'm like, you know, I'm, let me just get through my gig and then we'll talk. Because I, I remember, you know, having a break between the sets and then talking to people and then coming, coming on stage and thinking, like, where did my voice go? And, you know, then remembering I, I talked to a bunch of people in the, in the last 20 minutes kind of kind of ruined it. So, uh, so you have, yeah. Like, so, like, you, so in other words, like you can have a rough night. Like, there's gonna be some nights where you get up there and all oh. of a sudden it's a little rough, right? Uh, well, <clears throat> not too often. Like in in the last two years, I had 
two nights where I literally thought, you know, I, I, I can't do anything. And I remember we played, uh, I played a show with Animal Drive uh, in, in South Croatia, but, but I was driving the whole trip, a van for like six hours. And I was so tired when I came on stage, I could feel that, that, that like there's nothing and I was pushing and I, I sounded like, like Joe Cocker, you know, the whole gig. Yeah, did you would you say would you say um, when that happens, it feels like your voice gets like locked up, like uh, it gets kind of locked up? Yeah, yeah, yeah gets exactly. Like that. Yeah, yeah, it's, and um, you know, and the, and there's not you know when it's not your night, it's not your night, you know, and 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 it kind of it kind of you know I'm kind of depressed when that happened. I'm like, damn, you know, then it's, then I see somebody you know coming to see me uh, sing, you know how we singers yeah. are, you know. And I mean, I have no ego problems like 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 some of the singers, but you know, then you see somebody like like the other singer coming to see you, and you have a bad night, and you're like, oh, why, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. And then it gets um, in your head even more. Yeah, and it's. it's <coughs> um, yeah. yeah. There, there was a question from uh, there's a kid, the guy Matt Corey, uh, who's been who's yeah. like a childhood friend of mine, uh, who who's the one that sent you sent me the video of you. And he wanted oh, to cool. know about the song that you did. I think it was by, um, um, what's the name of the band? Ark, something like that. Is that right? Oh, Ark. Yeah. Is that, what's the name of that song? It's called Heal the Waters. He wanted to know, and I said, Matt, think about it. It's a pretty easy question to think of, but he, he wanted to know how do you keep your voice, how do you get so much um, color and thickness in your voice in that song? Um, by the way, the singer in that song is Yorn. Right. As, 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 a, as a very thick voice in general. Uh, actually, um, that's another thing that I wanted to discuss. But, you know, if you're a Yorn fan, you're not going to accept what I'm going to say now. But I, I was actually supposed to replace Yorn in that, in, in that band. And uh, we did that. We redid that song. And that the drummer, the original guy, the uh, the drummer was the only original member that was supposed to be in a, like a new lineup because Randy Corbin died. He, he was a bass player. Mm -hmm. He used to play with Ingvi Malmsteen and uh, yeah. uh, the keyboard player died and guitar player is, you know, is not talking to the drummer. And then I redid the song and he said like, you sound exactly like Yorn, you know, you're the only guy that can do it. You know, if you're, if, if you're not going to do it, I'm going to call Russell. And I'm, I said, you know, I'm going to do it. Then we got into like a schedule conflict. And I had those vocals and I was not allowed to use the new studio track. So I took the original one, kind of, you know, kind of struggled to, to, to remove the vocals and put my vocals in. Um, <clears throat> to get that thickness, it's, it, it's um, like a, a, a lot of, a lot of, it has to be a, a, a lot of power and a lot of rasp to get that kind of tone. And I mean, Yorn is using He's using it the same way because there are songs on that album where he sings clean in the middle range, uh -huh. and he doesn't and he doesn't sound like a, like a, like a baritone because you know he said he has a big voice and everybody thinks wow he can sing high but he has a big voice he's a baritone but then it, it, you know once you learn how to control rasp and how to you know how to compress rasp mm -hmm. properly that's where you can get like the that big fat voice and big fat tone wow. um it, it was hard for me to 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 learn that um i also covered russell like five years ago and i and you know people love that video and i and russell saw that video and uh but i watching it now you know i still didn't have that you know five years ago but today i i would do it completely differently so did, when you sat to do that song, did you sit there and like listen to the original track, sing your line, listen, listen, like trying to color your voice, like just manipulating different things in your throat to get that sound? Or do you just hear the sound in your head that you want to sing and go and just kind of go for it? Um, the thing is, um, my, my singing style is like, ex like very similar to yours. So everything he sings is very natural to me. It's very heavy but bluesy and it's right. and it's so so when i sing that song it was so natural i was just i wanted to get a few phrases like the, the same way he got them in the studio so i was focusing on, on few phrases but everything else was just very just very so. uh yeah it's you know th there are certain singers and bands that you know don't fit 
like there's certain singers and bands when you try to sing them it's like ah you know it's not my cup of tea mm-hmm. you know and, and then you and then you have to work more to achieve that but yorn and arc and that kind of music that's that, that's my kind of thing so i i think i did that like i i wanted to try to sing it and then i when i started singing i was like ah you know i'm just gonna record it today and, and i did it and i did it and i just sang it back and uh yeah yeah pretty cool do you uh <coughs> would you say your singing is pretty when you when you sing you're pretty loud singer like you're leaning in a lot you're leaning hard um uh, Jeff Scott Soto is a loud singer. Yeah. I can tell you that. I know. He's, he, dude, he makes me sound like he, a mouse. <laughs> he's a he, but uh, he's you know. Uh, but then there's like then there's there there's a singer like Nathan James. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you know Nathan. Uh-huh. And you know they told me that he's like a really quiet singer. And you know, I, I I'm I'm I am loud, but I'm not as loud as Jeff. And. Yeah. Uh, but you are like, not, you, you would say you're loud like you're not trying to hold back you're singing out no 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 it's and it, it, it's very it's very resonating um right even 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 when I sing without mic right. and you know I, I I wanted to get that and I wanted to have all my range you know even the low notes you know to try to try to sound very you know balanced it's not like when I sing high you know that I'm screaming and when I go down right. it's like ah! And, you know, you, you just lose the tone. Right. You know, I, yeah. That's cool. And, and do you, um, what about the, when you were singing the Ray, when you were doing, uh, you know, uh, last time, <coughs> was that a, uh, singing that? Because that's pretty, that's that's a real, that's a great one because it's so high a lot of the time. I don't know if it's E's or E flats the whole time. Like you're singing up there from C it's, to E. It's, it's, it's so ridiculously high. I was listening to to their live version from, um, from New Heaven. Uh-huh. And I think... I think Ray was really exhausted because he, I think he was like, you know, cursing himself at that point, like thinking, why did I put everything so high? And Jeff and I talked about it because I was singing Ball and Chain in, 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 um, right. from the first record uh-huh. in, uh, in a locker room. And I started singing and he said, is that, is that um, Badlands? And I said, yes. And he's like, why does everything have to be so ridiculously high? He said it's not even mid range; it's it's always so high. Yeah. And I said, I mean, you know, there are, you have those nights when, when where you can where you're like invincible; you can sing anything you want. But if you have a bad day, like your whole set list is is going down. You know, yeah. there's you, you don't have like I don't know like white thing. They have certain songs that are very you know mid range. Right. So if you can't. If you can't sing "Still of the Night," yep. you still have the ballads. You, you still have, I don't know, "Blind Man" or "Here I Go Walking Again." In the of the yeah. Yep. You know that kind of stuff. <laughs> but if you if you have Ray Gillen kind of thing, it's always ridiculously high. Yeah. Um, as but, far as that song, but you seem to kill it like it was. You almost you seem to do it like it was nothing, and you you even you you emulated his tone yeah. those those top notes the way it resonates, the where he resonates. I mean, that's a very. I mean, I really grew up listening to him. I was a guitar player at that point in my life, but I was yeah. very into singers. You know what I mean? I had, a, I had a really good singer in my band and I was always like, gr- always gravitated to listening to the really cool singers. And he just always said that way that he had this, this tone. And it was like, where's that coming from? It's like this heady sound, but it's loud and resonant. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's hard to achieve. That's um Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying to remember. I don't want to shout. Uh, I, I'm, I'm trying to remember the way I did it. I, I remember. Uh, I did Dreams in the Dark first. That's the one of the things I, I never posted. I have Dreams in the Dark too. Oh, cool. Um, but uh, you know, since it was a 25th anniversary tribute, I, I really listened to Ray closely, and I wanted to get every phrase, you know, as close yeah, as close, close as possible. But but you know. I have the similar, you know, voice color as him, and I have that vibe vibrato that I use. Um, and actually, there's there's a lot of resp when I sing uh, when I sing that Badlands cover. You know, people hear Ray and they think, "Wow, you know, he's such a clean, you know, rock singer." But the the thing is, it's not clean. There there is, but there's uh, there's resp. But once you put guitars and drums and bass in it, right, the resp. The rest just disappears, but but that's the extra push 
he gets to to get the power in in, in those uh, in those high in the real high, high notes. notes. That's what it seemed like you were doing. Like, and I'm watching you do it because I could hear that extra rasp that you got in your voice. It's obviously it's obviously there in that track, and I'm, I'm like, wow. But then as soon as you go to lean on that the top notes, and you you just lean on it, and it like bursts out of your face very clean. It's not raspy. Then you go about three notes below, and it's raspy. And then yeah, then, yeah. Whenever you come up yeah. to those real high ones, like the E flats and the E's, whenever you come up to those, you hear this really great head tone that he had. Like that's what he had. Yeah. Like, you really emulate that real well, man. Yeah, it's um, yeah, um, yeah. When I go to to the head voice, um, yeah, it, it's it's a lot more clean. Yeah, it's 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 hard to explain. I mean, uh, it, it, now it became part of my style, so you know, I I don't want to change it, but. Yeah, you know, I actually, I actually, we have a we have a phenomenal singer in TSO. You you may have heard of her. She's probably the best female singer I know right now on the planet. Her name is Chloe Lowry. Don't, um, don't no, I'll have to check her out. I'll I mean, check her out now. How do you, how do you spell yeah. it? It's Chloe. Oh, Chloe. Okay. Chloe Lowry. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna send you the link once we're finished with this. Oh, cool. Um, you know, she has most of the songs in TSO, and uh, you know, every time she starts to sing, you know. Uh, it's it's like a instant depression. If if you're a depressed person, you know you know don't don't listen to Chloe. Um, <laughs> and she's very clean, and and she has a perfect technique. And every time I sing in TSO, they always ask me to do everything raspy. And I have actually clean C's and C sharps oh, and everything, yeah. but uh, you know, and she's always asking like, why does everything have to be so raspy? And I you know I tell her you know. I was told to do it raspy. She's like, can you do it clean for me? And then I'm like, oh, it's an extra pressure. And I think there were two two uh, gigs on the last tour. It was Los Angeles and Oklahoma. I did it completely clean, like like very, very, very schooled. And she was like, I love it. And then I got the note, Dino, please go back to raspy. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> listening to all these crazy different advices from different right. people. but. Yeah. Hey, you could yeah, do both. It's... So I mean, you know, that's awesome. You got a choice. You do what you you know. Yeah. On your on yeah. your you know, it's their gig, obviously. So, but on your gig and your bands, you could do whatever you want, which is you know, that's the. the... I, I do. I, I I mix so many different yeah. things, you know, and. Uh, that's a glory yeah. of having a voice I... like yours, man. It's <sighs> you could do whatever you what you want to do, you know. Yeah. Was I mean, a... you know. I... Yeah. Who go on? Was uh, I was going to ask you? Is I uh, I ask this of all singers. Uh, everyone I've done this with, is there any singers that you considered like, wow, I can't get this guy. I can't seem to do what he's doing. Is there anyone that's you in your mind like, man, I wish I could get a little bit of that going. What is he doing there? So I've asked this of Jeff and Tony Hornell and all these guys. They all and everyone's got some have the same answers. I think uh, Ralph and someone else were both Steve Perry. And then uh, Jeff, like me, was like Terrence Trent Darby. It's like that's like his nemesis. He would love to be able to sound more like that. Like, how do you get that? Is there anyone that you feel like, I, I, wow, I can't do that guy? Because you seem to have a voice that you you're able to do so many different styles. Um, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so Jeff picked Terrence, right? Jeff, I think picked Terrence. Maybe Steve Perry too, but he definitely picked Terrence. Cause that well, was Steve my, Perry, well, Steve Perry is kind of hard to get, honestly. Um, now, now that you mentioned that, and I mean, uh, I'll, I'd love to take a minute to talk about Freddie Mercury because he was the yes. one I was explaining on my clinic. Um, and he and uh, living on my own was playing on radio the other day. I was with my dad, and, and I was I was like, I was like, listen to Freddie. You know, it's not. Um, he didn't have like his vibrato was very you know fast yeah. kind of. You know, kind of, kind of irritating. He, you know, it's not that he had like the the most gifted, you know, voice color. And you know, there's like Barry White or somebody that when he starts to sing, when he starts to talk, you know, you fall in love instantly. But his dynamics and uh, and uh, and interpretation, it, it's second to none. Like he, all of his disadvantages would come out as his advantages because he had yeah, well, phenomenal dynamics. Like he would. He would slide in the vibratos and then just push back, go more silent. And you would think like, wow, like he's able to do anything. And uh, I mean, the funny thing, he never went above A 
uh, what's that? It's it's A3, I think, in, in America, right? Or, uh, it's it's A, like... No, A4. A4. Yeah. A4. So he never went above A4, and he was a, and he was able to be like everybody's favorite singer. And yeah, I mean, later on, you know, Shamas Gowan has a D. Right, then and he gets, up, uh, then he gets up there a little bit, yeah, here and there. Yeah, yeah. He, can, he gets up, but he never sang that song songs live. But 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 Steve Perry is one of those singers too. It's it's like it's so it's so soft, yeah, but still so so resonating and still so. Um, yeah, Steve Perry is kind of. It's a trippy, right? Steve Perry, Steve Perry is kind of hard to hard to achieve, honestly. Yeah, I mean, like like I don't know about you, I, I actually sing in a band with Ainsley Dunbar from um, the original drummer. Oh, from uh, from uh, Jefferson Airplane. Uh, yeah, and also Journey. He played with Journey, Frank Zappa, Jeff Beck. I mean, he's played with everybody. White Snake, yeah, so, White Snake. Yeah, too. White Snake. So I got hired in this band to sing all the Journey and the White Snake. So oh, cool. Um, it's just a bunch, it's a group of guys of, of the guys like, like him and the guys from Steppenwolf, uh, Santana, oh, great. Santana, like different guys from that era. And, uh, it's, yeah, it's cool because they're like, don't worry about sounding like Steve Perry. And I'm like, yeah, I can't, I could just sing the songs. I could sing the notes. Yeah. I could sing the yeah. melodies, but the tonality, he seemed to have such an open, open sound where, uh, as I definitely to sing that high, I have to be in a, clo- a more of a closed position like that pressure we were talking about before, like yeah, he didn't seem yeah. to have any of that pressure, you know, he just seemed to have this, this open free voice the whole time. Yeah. It was very strange. Yeah. Um, I actually, I had a cover of journey. I think I, I removed it from YouTube because I did it like eight years ago. I did faithfully and it went kind of viral in, in my country and people were like, wow, blah, blah, blah. And then I redid it, and I was really close to Steve Perry. And but there's a guy on YouTube that uh, I watched. This uh, he's probably my age now. He's from from Philippines, like Arnell, uh-huh. and he used to sing faithfully. And when I heard him singing faithfully, I liked it actually more than Steve Perry. Oh, you wow. know, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I if I'm allowed to say it. I'm gonna send you his link too. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. He's, I, I, I promote different singers, you know, that's, that's, that's great. That's, I mean, that's you're, you're, you're a lover of it. I mean, even like the, the, you know, the fact that, you know, you're hanging with guys that you grew up listening to has got to be such a great feeling for you, you know, being around, oh, Jeff, yeah. being around Jeff and Russell Allen and Yorn and these cats. It's like, that's pretty cool. Yeah. You know, yeah. That Keep must winger, be really yeah. a great feeling, you know? Yeah. yeah. Winger, I saw you do a, I saw you do a song with Kip Winger. Yeah, uh, we did Miles Away. Yeah. I mean, that's one of that's one of the best power ballads probably of that era. And uh, I'm, you know, I, I, I don't want to waste anybody's time talking about Kip, but um, the Kip Winger not being one of the most appreciated uh, composers and musicians overall is just, you know, the proof that something's wrong with with, with people. I mean, you know, I listen to metal, but like most of the metal he- metal heads are really ridiculously stupid people with 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 such a poor music music taste you know and they only hear you know riffs right and the only thing that matters is you know how heavy it is right and you know i i really know kip and i really know winger's music and i know how they developed from like a 80s glam hair metal whatever then they had like more grungy hard rock and then they became more proggy and you know, keep plays most of the parts there, and then singing with him, um, you know, twice. Uh, yeah. Once, once in Italy, once in Budapest. Actually, we sang on Frontiers um, VIP party because we played together the next day. I played with my band. Nice. And then I came to see Jeff in Budapest, and I went backstage, and I was like, "Is that Kip?" And he said, "Yeah, like let's say hi to Kip." And he and he's. I said, "You know, he probably won't remember me." You know. Why would he remember? And he's like, Dino, he's like, dude, like, please, w- would you like to sing Miles Away once again with me? Oh, that's and I said, And I said, you know, I, I was like, ah, I think I have a flu. And then he just ran away. He's like, oh, don't talk about flu. You know, I'm far away from home, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And, and I was in the audience. I was like, oh, damn, why didn't I say yes? You know, I love Winger so much and blah. Yeah. And then he said, is there anybody, you know, who wants to sing this song with me? And I just, I raised my hand from the audience and he's like, dude, but you're sick. And I was like, ah, and he said, yeah, you know, come on over. Ah. And then we, we did it. Yeah. No, that's and actually on that video, you can see Jeff running, running uh, behind the stage and filming it. 
Oh, that's so cool. angles. oh, that's great. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's yeah. such a great feeling for you to be in that situation, man. I mean, you, and you deserve it because you're such a talented dude. And seeing how ta- talented a guy like Kip is, I mean, a lot of people don't know how trained he is as a, as a musician. Like he's like a classically trained musician as well as, being, as well as being a voice coach, as well as being Kip Winger. Like, you know what I mean? Um, I'm t- I mean, I understand him because I'm I'm classically trained pianist. I, I finished academy for it, so wow. I, I I listen to his classical stuff, and I'm probably the only rock guy that gets that side completely. So you know, yeah, 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 yeah. I wish I had more time to to talk to Kip about you know classical music because you know people people are very like general about you know they say like Kip is so talented he plays classical music, but you know they never really dug deep you know right. to, to hear it and I'm, I'm listening to his classical stuff and and it's you know i mean you can't really compare winger with with poison and, and, right. and, and uh, right. you know I, I love warrant i love motley crew but winger is something more like when you listen to rainbow in a rose or hit it for a heartbreak it's it's like a heavier toto to yeah. me I, yeah, it, it always I was that. yeah i get that you know toto, toto is probably the most musical band that ever existed. It's it's like a dream theater w- without unnecessary solos. That that's how I see Toto, <laughs> you know. And I'm saying this as a big dream theater fan too. Right, 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 right. Totally. <laughs> that's yeah. great. That's cool, yeah. man. What about uh, you had uh, a vocal surgery once in your career, right? Yeah. And yeah. What, what I did. was what was that from? What had happened? Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm struggling with acid reflux. Ah, okay. for for a sixth year now <clears throat> and it's it, it's it, um that's the um, it's it's very different like when you don't have any problems as a singer like you're really gifted and yeah. i um I, re- I remember how everything started i used to sing in a art maiden tribute band and i you know there's good days bad days but um, we sang, we had a gig, and I felt like something was really wrong. Like, like you know, not a bad, first of all, you know, it's, maybe it's a bad day, you know, mm-hmm. I won't think about it. But um, the next day, I was a guest on a, like, a, like a festival for kids, uh, and I had to sing my song, which was not that high, and blah, blah, and I was, I, I, I couldn't sing. I, I pretty much lost my voice, mm-hmm. and that never happened. And I went to see a doctor and he said, you know, you know, it's okay. Just rest. And I had an album to, to do, uh, during the summer and I couldn't get like everything above F Mm -hmm. sounded so raspy, Yeah. but sounded so raspy. Like there was no tone. It was just rasp. Yep. And I went on a festival in, uh, Belarus where I sang show must go on, which was the video that got me in trans Siberian orchestra. And I, I, at that time I had a tumor and I didn't know that I had it. So I, I came there and I was like, you know, what am I supposed to do? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm so raspy. I can't, I can't get any tone. You know, I can always go sing like Paul Rogers and go down, you know, and then improvise and stuff. And, uh, <clears throat> I got some, um, I went to see a doctor there. And he kept get, get, get giving me like 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 a steroids and injection and like in, injecting in my throat, uh, you know, to kind of pull it off. And it helped. But when then when I got back, they said, you know, there is something going on. And it was like a like little tumor that was under my my vocal cord. And um, they thought it, they thought it was a cyst. But then when they put me, you know, to sleep, uh-huh. um, they said it was something else. And um, I was not allowed to talk for like a, a month. Mm-hmm. And then I went on audition for Croatian voice that year. And I haven't sang like a tone before I went for that audition. Wow. And I did Here I Go Again by Whitesnake. And not everything was there, but everything was so clean and so smooth. Like, you know. Like a weight had been lifted. <laughs> I, I mean, like the best outcome that, could have, they could have ever been from a sur- from a vocal sur- surgery it happened nice. to me so i was really happy and you know it probably happened cuz I'm, I'm i'm not smoking and i'm not i'm not drinking but i used to drink a lot on my acoustic gigs when i would play by myself in a, in a very very you know um, packed bars everybody was smoking and i would and you know 
that, yeah. that was affecting my voice because as in, you know singing and playing and just breathing in in that area in that space yeah after, after one set i'm dry and my voice is almost gone but i i, I was drinking a lot of whiskey at that time on gigs yeah. blah 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 and that might have caused it. So I, 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 I quit everything. And honestly, you know, you know, when you have a bad day, then you take, you know, a few drinks and all of a sudden you can sing everything. Yeah. Uh, but uh, <clears throat> I, I stopped drinking alcohol on my gigs and I drink only like water or something. And, you know, for three hours, you know, I, I myself, uh -huh. you know, you don't get drunk, you don't get weak. And, you know. I mean, it sounds better, and yeah. Do you uh, do you know. drink at all? Yeah. At, at like when you're not singing, do you have drinks? Do you still drink once in a while? Mm, not, I mean, not not too much. Um, you know, sometimes it happens that we, you know, we have a party like in right. TSO. Right. In TSO, I I started recording this with this George Lynch um, album I'm doing. It's it's me, George, and uh, Will Hunt. He used to play. He plays in Evanescence, and he used to play with in Black Label Society. Uh -huh. You know, very, very cool combo. And uh, I was so tired from TSO gigs that I would come to our bus, set, you know, my equipment and start singing. And I would be so tired that I would just, you know, get a couple of drinks. And I did the half of the album, you know, uh, on the bus. And I'm still listening to those tracks and I wouldn't change anything. It, it just, you know, it worked. It was, it, it was something I needed. At that time, good. But usually, I, I, yeah, I, I don't drink. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Shit, man, we covered a lot. I'm trying to think. Is there anything else we haven't covered? Because I'll, <laughs> I'll get like notes from guys that have, that you know are excited that I'm going to interview you, and be like, why didn't you ask him this? Why didn't you ask him that? <laughs> it's like I don't know. You know, you're here. I didn't. I don't prepare anything. I just like to have a conversation about it. You know, and then and let oh, people. Oh, by, by the way, um, uh, Jeff was showing me Boogie Nights. Um, where was that? So we were at the parking lot. Uh -huh. Which city was that? Uh, oh, uh, Col Columbia, uh, North Carolina. That's right. So we went to have a couple of drinks on the bus. And he said, you know, he said, Dino, I know you, you'll appreciate this because you're like, a, you love Prince and stuff that I, so, and he was showing me Boogie Nights and, uh, Awesome. Uh, so, so, so you, so I knew, he, I knew Joe Retta was one of the singers. Yeah, and I've been, so, one of, I've been one of the singers since '95. Oh, so okay. And same with Joe and same with Jeff. What had happened was, I, I, I had been living in LA since I was like 19 or 20, and then I, that was like an '89, and then I stayed in LA till about '94. And as a guitar player, I had my band out there doing that stuff. But then when I moved back to Connecticut, I knew I wanted to sing. So I moved back home to go in my mom's basement just to, like, work on my voice as a singer. Like, I want to sing. I just don't know how, you know. And yeah. um, I started, like, a little acoustic thing. And then I ended up getting – someone came into the – I worked at a music store teaching les guitar lessons. And someone said, hey, remember that band, The Boogie Nights? And they were a band called Roxanne from L.A. that I used to – my band used to play with. So I was like, yeah, yeah, I remember those guys. He goes, they're auditioning in New York. And I was like, man, I know those guys make bread. That could be a change in my life. So I was like, <laughs> I went to the audition, and I ended up getting in the band. I ended up getting the audition as the singer. And then literally about two months later, I get a phone call from Jeff. And he's like, hey, Dan, it's Jeff. What's going on? I'm like, how you been? You know? And he's like, listen, man, I got an opportunity for you. Um, he wanted me to play in his play guitar in his, one, one of the original bands he had then. Um, eyes talisman i don't think it was i think it, it might have been talisman I, I just asked jeff i don't remember what it was at that so it'd be 95 96 whatever it was at that moment or he was starting something new and he's like i can get you gigs out here playing guitar in this thing i do called boogie nights and i go dude i just <laughs> got the gig in new york as the singer he goes you're the guy that got the new york gig i said yeah so it was like oh, all right cool well, good for you and you know we always kept in touch you know and yeah uh, yeah but yeah i've been that's doing a, that i mean that's a, that's a very cool gig i I would fun. love to do something something funky and and and, and I mean you know I, I, I I'm gonna check it out I I, I only heard Jeff doing yeah. that because he showed me I I I got I gotta check it out and more. that's how I met Retta when I moved back to California I uh like 2001 or two um I was still singing for for Boogie Nights out out in LA and like just traveling for wherever they put me Utah Vegas whatever but. Um, I got a phone call and they said, Danny, can you play guitar in a gig called the Atomic Dogs, which was 
the funk band of Boogie Nights, like where they did all Parliament and all that Gap band and all that. And I love that stuff. So I was like, yeah, yeah. I, I knew it all on guitar. I was like, yeah, I'll do it. You know, that'd be fun. So because Brian Young, the guitar player from David Lee Roth, was going out with Roth for six weeks. So okay. I got to play the gig and Joe was the singer. And that's how I met Joe on, the, on oh. that gig. And yeah, he blew my mind. I was just like, God, Joe. I mean, he could. Damn, I, I mean, when, when I heard him sing Oof. for TSO, I was like, wow. He's beautiful. Is... Like, and you, if you, I used to go watch him do a band called Yo Mama. No, was it Joe Mama? Joe Mama? Joe Mama, I think. It was a little wine bar. And it was just him as a trio with a keyboard player and a drummer. And they would play all Stevie Wonder, Donny Hathaway, Shaka Khan. And he sang almost totally different than the way he sings, like with all the bands that you hear him with. Yeah, uh, the yeah, I can actually imagine that Stevie Wonder is actually my favorite, yeah, uh, out of rock singer. You know, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I think he's, I think he, he's the guy where I got all, all, all the riffs from. Yeah, yeah. There's one riff that I use really often. I think I've heard him doing that too. I can't remember which one it is, but yeah, I used, I used. To, uh, it's the same it, with Red Eye. It's the same. Like you can hear that he can do like a deal stuff, but he's so soulful too. So right, you yeah. Know. You guys are really, really similar in, in in voice for sure. I mean, yeah. Well, as soon as I saw you in the TSO thing, and you actually get the same. You know, you you took a spot, so you're wearing the jacket. And I'm like, oh yeah, you you totally fit the whole the sound, the rasp, the soul. It's like it all it all kind of fits in there. You know yeah, it's, it's it's so so Nathan left and Joe Retta replaced Nathan and oh, then okay. I replaced Joe Retta. Oh. And uh, I'm not sure if you know Caleb Johnson. He he's new this year. He was on he was the win, he was the winner of American Idol 2014. Mm, he was, yeah, he sang okay. Dream On and Still of the Night and Journey. Oh cool. The guy the guy with the long he he's one of the the most soulful voices I've ever heard. I remember like, hearing a guy, but it was probably <clears> years before. I I didn't really watch a lot of American Idol. Yeah. But because it was probably years before, but there was a guy that sang a that sang the Badlands tune, the a cappella. Oh, that's Bo Bice. Bo Bice. That's okay, Bo so that's Bice. what I was thinking. You said Caleb Johnson. That's what I'm thinking of. But oh, so and, Caleb and Johnson Bice. was another guy. Yeah, Bo Bice is also amazing. He used to sing in a, in a dream. In a dream, right, 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 right. In a dream, and, and I, I love his solo records. He's it's very like a south southern rock bluesy, right, right, right. right. Kind of stuff. Great stuff. Great stuff. And so, yeah, Caleb, where's Willis? Where's Caleb from? Was he from? Where's he from? Uh, he's from, um, I think Asheville, um, Asheville, North Carolina, oh, okay. something like that. I'll have to check him out. Uh, yeah, yeah. If you're yeah, he's, he, he's on the east. So, so Jeff and I are on the west. He's on the east. Russell Allen is on the east. Joe Holstra from Wisting is playing guitar for the east. Yep. Uh, Trail is playing guitar for the west, and um, you know. Mats Levin, he used to sing with the uh, Ingve too. He's also one of the singers in TSO. Oh, uh, he okay. came, to, yeah. He he came the same year uh, when I came too. So I thought Nathan, and the th what's his name? The guy Nathan that you replaced, that Joe replaced, and you replaced. Um, uh, Nathan James. Yeah. I thought he was from Europe, but he was in like the TSO. Yeah, Europe. yeah. He's from UK. He, he's from UK. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I got yeah. That. All right. Yeah, yeah. He used to be on that uh, voice thing. That's right. Um, That's where I remember him from. He sang like Bon Jovi or something on it. Yeah, yeah, and and, and nobody turned around. Like that, that was really bizarre. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Come on. He's he's amazing. So. Yep. Um, yeah, it's um. Excellent. Yeah. Man. Well, dude, yeah. I I'm so glad that you took the time to do this in such a short notice. You were like, yeah, I'll do it. That that was great. Yeah, sure. I Why really, not? I really appreciate it, and I want you to plug give give uh, everybody right now. Um, where they can reach you, where they can find their, your music, the dot coms and websites. Tell everybody right now so they can know. Oh, wow. I got, um, I mean, it, it's mostly Instagram and Facebook. Like if you search for my name, that's where you can get all the infos. I'm, um, I'm doing an album with, with Lynch. It's coming out this year. I did a, like a collab album with Dean Castronovo and, and, and a lot of different people. And I have my band coming with a new album, in the beginning of next year. And that's so called, Trump, the name of that band it's is? Called, it, it, yeah, it's called Animal Drive. Animal Drive. And do you have, is that a yeah, website we'll, for that too? Like animaldrive.com or? Um, wow, I'm such a, I'm such a bad promoter of myself. <laughs> let, let me, let me check out. That's okay. I'm going to put it in the, in, in the YouTube thing, in the caption, and I'll, I'll put a bunch of stuff about you anyway. So I'll oh, find, so, I'll find the stuff for you for sure. <laughs> uh, let me see. Yeah. So it's www.animal.com. 
uh, sla- uh, it's like a, it's not a slash. Oh, what's that? Dash. It's like a, yeah, it's, it's a dash drive.com. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So that'll be somewhere. And I'll, and I'll put all the other ones where they can find you. And man, just keep singing. Do some more of those, uh, those Badland covers. Put them up because I know guys like uh, Matt Corey loves to hear it. And a lot of, of the other uh, great singers out there would love to hear that stuff. <laughs> Uh, well, you know, I, I I think I won't be doing any more covers. I'll do like a sing throughs of the songs I'm doing with with different people because it, you know, I yeah. I wrote I, I wrote 45 songs <laughs> that are coming out this year. Wow. With with I'm not allowed to say you know some of the people I'm working with still. Okay. But it, it it's 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 so different with with genres. Some of the songs are like R and B. Some of the songs are prog metal. Awesome. Some of the songs are heavy. Some of the songs are, you know, bluesy, kind of gospel, kind of stuff. So, you know, Excellent. I mean, I, I'm one of those those guys that won't, you know, I I, I want to do everything, and you know, that's time great. time to the enemy. Yeah, that's great. I'm level. Well, keep, stay hungry like that, man. That's great. Yeah, and, uh, stay hungry. I'll be listening. I'll be. And I'm sure I'm going to run to you one of these days when, like, if you're in LA or something, and you're, you know, going to be hanging out with Jeff. Have Jeff get a hold of me. I'll, I'll come down. Uh, like this time last year, I was in LA, but uh, and and he told me like, dude, come on, stay in LA. But I had I had gigs with my band in Italy and Switzerland. I had to get back. So, Working but uh, cool. I'm thinking about staying in LA. I was thinking about moving to LA at one point. So nice. Uh, well, I move. Uh, I I moved from LA. I move about. I lived about. I live about three and a half hours north on the coast, but I'm still close enough. But it's yeah. Not, it's not as much traffic up here. It's a little crazy. Oh now. yeah. Yeah, I, I can imagine that. I mean, three and a half hours in my country is a lot, but in America, it's it's, it's nothing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, cool, man. It was a pleasure to meet you, Dino, and I will be talking to you soon, man. Cool. Thank cool. you. Talk thank, to you. Thank you again. Thank you. All right, buddy. Peace. Oh,